Now, those signs, I talked about it before, union workers for Trump. I commented on it because it, it didn't make sense. He's in a non-union shop. Why would union workers be there waving signs? I was told those signs don't have union stamps on them, which they always do, meaning they were likely created for this event and not by actual union guys. Clever, clever. Okay, so what else did Trump do? The obvious. He went hard at Biden for basically being senile and for hating the workers. Crowd liked it. But maybe the former president's own memory may be an issue because he has a record as president that is very different from what he was offering tonight, both about the past and the future. There's a reason the UAW and many other unions didn't back him despite their woes. He didn't back them in 2019 when they fought for overtime and safety standards. He doesn't believe in a minimum wage increase. He made some bold policy moves on trade with China and Mexico and Canada. He did. But he had a chance to take down China and get rid of most favored nation status, and he didn't. He promised it tonight, but why didn't he do it last time? He didn't bring back plants. More closed. One car plant closed and reopened to make the evil EVs that he was talking about tonight. In fact, Trump showed one of their models off at the White House. That plant closed too, by the way. Tonight, he called them the death of the auto industry. Carrier, the Taiwanese company that came that was going to mean all these jobs. None of it planned out as he said it did. Look it up. And he was either quiet or active in eroding safety and organizing abilities in workplaces across the country. Okay? And his tax cut was a big deal. It was also unpaid for. And it never paid for itself. And it did not help workers the way it did investors. Period. These are not talking points. They are facts. Look them up. Now look, here's the flip. There's no question we need better than the state of things today on many levels. I hear it from you all the time, most recently in East Palestine. Will former President Trump convince enough of you that he can bring better? Now, showing that Trump is off about the facts is not the bar for the Democrats. That's too easy, okay? Their real concern may not be the age of their messenger, but the age of their message for so many who are desperate for better. So how will the Democrats counter what former President Trump just laid out? California Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna is head of the class of the future of the Democratic Party, and he joins us tonight. It's good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Chris. Can you beat what Trump laid out tonight? Well, I appreciated your laying out the facts, because here's what's sad. What Trump is appealing to at a gut level, rhetorically, has appeal. He's saying, look, we hollowed out this country's middle class and working class. We shipped all of our factories offshore. We never would have Wall Street go to London. We wouldn't have Hollywood just be uh, go over to Bollywood. We wouldn't have tech go to Europe. But we did this with manufacturing, and it was wrong. And that has appeal. We want to be an industrial power. Here's the problem, Chris. Not only did he have four years and not do it and plants closed on his watch and auto jobs left, the problem is he has no solutions, no specifics. You want to bring manufacturing back? We need a mission in this country to provide funding to new industries and labor to do it, the way FDR did it, the way Hamilton did it. I'm working with Republicans to bring new steel plants back. That's going to take government funding to be able to do it. And so my problem with Donald Trump is where is the beef? Where are the actual solutions? And his point is, well, it's on your watch right now, and things are only getting worse. So, and Biden, uh, personally, is not exactly a walking vote for confidence. So you're vulnerable. Chris, I think the American people are tired of saying whose watch it's on. Here's the reality. For the past 50 years, the working class has gotten shafted. Industry after industry left. We went from the biggest exporter of steel to the biggest importer of steel. Nine out of the 15 top steel companies are today in China. We don't have a single one. So Donald Trump came and he said, look, this has to stop. We've hollowed out the middle class. The working class doesn't have a fair shot. And a lot of people said, you know what? That's right. The status quo is not working. And I think that emotional appeal is why he's still at 40, 45 percent in the polls. The Democrats need to recognize that. 
Then we need to say, you know what, the status quo was wrong, but here's how we actually build the new plants. There was not any new steel plants that came up under Donald Trump. There were not new auto plants that came up under Donald Trump. Not because of who he is, because he didn't have the vision of saying we've got to finance it. That's what China is doing. That's what Japan right. is doing. That's what FDR did to build our country. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.